Hey guys, it's Mario here and in this video I want to introduce you to a new video series that I'm going to be doing on this channel that is going to cover how to trick your brain into eating less food. And this is something I've been planning to do for a very long time. This video series is going to be all about different types of tools and methods that are evidence-based, science-based, that you can use to design your diet and your environment uh, to eat less food and stick to a calorie deficit without having to rely on your willpower without the need for a lot of motivation and just automate the whole process of staying lean and getting lean. So with this video series, what I wanna cover is multiple different parts and different principles. And the way it's gonna be structured is that I'm gonna be uh, first introducing the principle, then I'm gonna be breaking down the principle in terms of research and what we know so far, how this applies to our modern environment because a lot of these things are actually an evolutionary advantage in a scenario, in a context of a hunter-gatherer species, but in today's environment, they're backfiring against us and making us overeat. So it's important to recognize these and being able to apply some of these principles and to take advantage of them when necessary, but also to recognize when they're kind of uh, hindering us from reaching our results. And as well as I wanna point out, I mean, none of these tools are the magic pill. I don't have the magical solution, of course. The more tools we have, the better, right? That's the, the whole idea behind the series. So the first part of it is going to be about sensory specific satiety. And now you might've been thinking, well, shit, I mean, that sounds very complicated. Well, it's not really that complicated. So um, what sensory specific satiety really is, is a two component phenomenon. The first component is that as you eat a food, as you consume the same food, your appetite and the satisfaction that you're getting from that food is actually diminishing. And the second component of that uh, principle is that if you introduce a new taste, if you introduce, let's say, a new stimulants or a new food, and that variety will actually increase your appetite. So it really goes in two ways. So uh, the blander the food is, the less likely you're to overconsume that food. And you probably experience this, even if the food isn't that bland, let's say we take chocolate, for example, the first bite is the tastiest, but if you just if you're just forced to eat 50 chocolate bars in a row, you're probably gonna get sick of it and you're gonna be like, oh, what? I don't wanna eat this, right? It doesn't give you the same amount of satisfaction because it's the same food. And we're kind of wired to uh, experience this, right? So as a hunter-gatherer species, as omnivores, we're wired to seek variety. And um, a great study from uh, 1984 decided to put this to a test when they look at a the buffet versus a four course meal with the same food. So with the buffet, they gave people a lot of options. Um, they have sausages, like chocolate desserts, bananas, and um, butter, bread, like all these combinations. And the other group, they just had one food and spread around different courses. And what they found is that the people that had the variety ate about 44% more food. And you probably experienced this yourself. I mean, we don't need research studies to see that this is happening in a restaurant every single day. This is happening in um, all the buffets that you've ever been to or for holidays. You've probably seen that uh, people tend to eat a lot more because there's so much different variety, so much different taste, and people will just try everything. And there's always room for dessert, you know, the good old saying. And um, what this really comes down to is that we can manipulate the variety of tastes of our diet, and this is coming back to practical application, to make us in one way fuller and the second way to allow us to reduce the calorie amount of our diet, so of our meals and at the, and the end of the day of our 24 hour consumption. So how can we practically apply this? So number one, well, if you're struggling with eating a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruits, you can actually apply the principle of variety there to increase the amount of vegetables and fruits that you're consuming. So you're kind of overriding that sensory specific satiety there. So you can add 10 different types of vegetables and you're most likely going to be able to eat a lot more vegetables than if you were just eating plain old tomatoes all the time and a kilo of tomatoes in a meal, right? So you're more likely to be able to eat more if there's a variety of different tastes. So like peppers, cucumbers, broccoli, spinach, like all these combinations. And same goes with fruits. So if you're struggling to eat a lot of fruits, which some people, I mean, I'm, I'm quite surprised how many people are dieting down and they're not even sticking to the basics of eating three, four servings of fruits in a day. You know, that just doesn't make any sense because that's where your micronutrition is coming from, from vegetables and fruits. 
and this is what we can take the principle to our advantage is let's add a variety of those to make sure that we consume a lot of those vegetables and fruits. And where we don't want a lot of variety is actually when it comes to those highly palatable, high calorie density foods, where we're talking about a specific combination of sugar, fat, and salt, or in general, carbohydrate and uh, high fat combined adds a lot of palatability and has a very high reward for that food in our brain center. So we doesn't allow us to stop eating essentially. We're, we won't be as full as if we were just having that a little bit more blander. So instead of let's say combining, quick example here, sweet potatoes, butter, and four different types of uh, sauces that are all full of loaded with calories. If you just eat sweet potato with a protein source, you're less likely to overconsume that. Or if you just eat butter with a protein source, you're less likely to consume that. But if you combine all of those together, you're more likely to overconsume and you're less likely to stick to your calorie uh, deficit. And we're, of course, I mean, we can override this by using our sheer willpower and just plowing through that and using my fitness pal and kitchen weight scale and calculate and all of these things together. But that takes an enormous amount of energy. And uh, uh, I don't know about you, but I don't wanna spend two hours a day tracking every single gram of food to make sure that I didn't overeat. So these are the things that help me stick to my calorie uh, intake regardless of, I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm missing out because I have all the variety, but not in the same meal. And I'm not advocating here that we should eat chicken, broccoli, and rice all day, which is, um, I know some people, and in general, people like to gravitate toward that all or nothing thinking, but we can learn something from that type of diet because that type of diet is actually very easy to stick to and it's gonna make you feel fuller and the, I mean, there's also negative effects of lacking of micronutrients and it, most people are deficient if they just uh, consume that kind of diet and it's not a good idea. So just first off, I wanna point that out. But we can learn that if you reduce the taste of food and variety of food, people will actually eat less calories naturally. And this is well documented as well. So we wanna make sure to find a good balance between to make our foods tasty enough and we actually can reprogram our taste receptors after a couple of weeks because they get used to that food. And if you something wasn't tasty for you, you probably realize that, let's say as a little kid, you didn't like the taste of tomatoes, but all of a sudden now you do like the taste of tomatoes. You can actually train yourself into a new taste, but that's a whole different video, which I'm gonna go into as well. Uh, but the whole idea is that you can reduce variety in places where you recognize that you are overeating. And the second part of practical application is going beyond designing your diet is really increasing the mindfulness and seeing how the food manufacturers and the companies and the restaurants and the supermarkets and your environment around you is actually uh, playing this card of variety to make you overeat and overconsume food. So being mindful about this and really real, uh, just realizing, man, I mean, these people are exploiting my <laughs> tendency to overeat. And once you become aware of this, you're actually gonna be able to manipulate a little bit of uh, your diet choices when you're eating out, when you're at a buffet, when you're at an event, when you're at, at a holiday, a dinner, gathering, meeting. If you want to reduce your calorie intake, you know what to do. You just have to reduce the variety and that's gonna definitely help uh, with reducing that intake. But as well as if you keep eating the same food, you will get a lot of those good cal. I mean, you're gonna get a lot of calories that you need without um, feeling any hunger because you're gonna get fuller faster. So uh, this is the first part of this video series. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna leave all the science in the description below as links. There's a lot of studies on century specific satiety. I'm gonna leave a Wikipedia link, which is a little bit more friendlier to read. And um, this is a very, very interesting concept when you're looking at a diet and there's a variety of different research studies looking into general food taste and how it affects like palatability and how it affects our body fat set point, which we're gonna go into in the future videos. And I'm looking forward to bringing you the further parts of this series. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the series, what do you think about the science? We're going a little bit more in depth, we're going a little bit more advanced here. Um, these are the principles that often people are not aware of and they're not, um, being taught in any school or any place like that. So we have to look at the research for it. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.